Hey, listen, um, so yeah. let's, let's um, first of all, it's an amazing yeah. film and uh, it's an a, a beautiful directorial debut. I want to just read the synopsis to give folks an idea of what it is. Sure, okay? sure. Um, in 1998, Miami, rampant poverty, broken families, and a prejudiced system pushed underprivileged youth to the fringes of society. But for a magnetic group of teens, there's a reprieve, a game where it's not about who, uh, not about where you come from, but how you play. That equalizer is chess. Mr. T. Martinez, the character you play, a yeah. chess militant and a passionate coach leads them to a completely foreign field of battle, the National Chess, chess Championships. With an un underfunded school district, Martinez and his team can't just waltz into the arena. They have to fight for it. Chess runs parallel to their own experiences as Martinez teaches them that the power of critical thinking can not only save their kings, but also their lives. That's it. And, and um, I guess I wanna first get into, because there's a, you have your director statement, which I think is really important in the framing of this. When you, you said, when I was growing up, I didn't see Latin people represented, represented in pop culture. Well, while watching movies or reading books, I felt like an outsider looking in on some alternate, alternate reality where people like me didn't exist. Mm. Does that was, first of all, was that one of the things that drew you to the story, John, and your directorial debut? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the lack of positive Latin representation just is outrageous. It's outrageous when we're the largest ethnic group in America 70 million people and nobody, nobody's doing stories on us. No picture books. Uh, who, who's on MSNBC? Who's on CNN? Who, who's in Hulu? I mean, it's like, and it's not like we don't e exist or we don't have talent. We're not vibrant and we don't have stories to tell. Is that nobody is, is asking us. Nobody even want, and, and, you know, I present lots of stories to studio heads. And I presented this story to studio heads. It took two decades to get this movie to the screen. And, and when I went to the studios, they had all these crazy Hollywood wisdom. You know, Latin people don't want to see Latin people. Latin people don't want to see feel good movies. They all, everybody had a, a weird ass excuse that I had to like, you know, try to keep my, 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 my comportment because I was about to, to, <laughs> to, to get all ghetto on them. I'll, I'll and, make drama on them. Yeah, I'm like, come on. What? I don't know. See who? Huh? Yeah. All right. So I, 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 there, was, there was also this other thing that was happening at the same time, because as, as we were invisible, even though, you know, we're 50% of LA, 35% of New York. I mean, you see us everywhere. We're doing everything, but not in the media, not celebrated, not glorified. At the same time as that's going on, then this horrible book that represents the other thing that's happening to us called The Bell Curve which was these scientists, and it was everywhere, PBS, really respected, 60 Minutes, and these scientists went on to prove that Latin and Black people, through their tests, were born genetically, intellectually inferior, so we could not never achieve. Then, obviously, people started finally doing research on them and found out that they were fake scientists and that their tests were fake. But the damage that uh, does, but it, it also shows... The other thing, being not only being invisible, but at the same time, being demonized and 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 put down. You had a, so you had these two forces against you that for that forged me in 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 a lot of ways to to be able to fight against systemic racism in Hollywood. And then and then this movie comes to me, and it's like this is this is something positive, man. And then these are, kids are intellectual. This is, this is the whole antidote to that horrible book and, and all the negative press that, that, that they put out on us constantly. Even in Hollywood, the, the movies are all narcos, you know, still feeding into some negative demonizing of Latin people, even, even when the movies are successful. So this, this movie with positive, you know, five Latin and black kids, from the toughest town in Miami called, uh, back, back then it was called Liberty City, now it's called Overtown. In 1998 became United States National Chess Champions, which was almost impossible. They, they, their schools were defunded. 
you know, there's no trickle down economy. That, that shit is such bullshit. Nothing trickles down. They get nothing. Uh, you know, underprivileged, no supplies, no nothing. And this teacher who, you know, he was Cuban. He was Latin guy himself. And he understood these kids. Yeah. And, and he created this safe space for them so that they could come. Because these were ghetto nerds. They were, so that's, I related to that part, too, that they were, they were like, you know, uh, street intellectuals and, and, and gifted kids and, and um, you know, book nerds and bookworms and they had no place to be, you know, they didn't want to fight. They didn't want to be gangsters. They didn't, they, they didn't want to do football. They, they, they wanted a place to read and, and, and look up math and stuff. And, and this teacher created the safe space for them. And John, um, you know, they're struggling. They, they are struggling against those kind of, um, those barriers as well. I mean, you have a great scene in the film, uh, where you where the characters are talking about the history of chess and mm. it reminded me a little bit of um you know uh <laughs> latin history of morons just a little bit just a little bit but it's been you know john the one thing about you and you said you were fighting uh you know you're always fighting is that um you 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 were fighting these perceptions for a long time as, as a, as a performer. I mean, I remember seeing you in 1997 uh, doing freak, a, 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 a workshop at freak at PS 135. Was it 135? Well, uh, uh, PS one. Oh my God. I'm blanking. What the, I'm helping. PS 192. 192. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right across the street from the Selka, that great Ukrainian place with the K Vasha Karnishkas. On the and, east uh, side. Yes. On the lower east side, man. Kielbasa. Yes. And, um, and, and, I, you know, I was coming from a play that I was doing off Broadway. It was almost all white um, uh, audience members. And I come into that show and it was standing room only. We were all standing around and you were, you were working off your notebook at that time. And it was the most exciting night of theater that I'd ever experienced. And, and more than half of the audience was Latinx. And that was, mind blowing um, to have happen in 97 in, in New York City, right? Um, but you, you, you've you been fighting this fight and breaking down barriers through your whole career um, as a Latino, a Latinx um, performer, man. You, you, you're you the highest paid Latinx performer, the, you know. At, at one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you broke all the barriers, you know? Mm. And so, you know, I guess what I'm getting at is these kids are breaking down social and psychological barriers that mm. they're clearly up against. And in the scene where you're giving the history, you, using Paul Morphy, uh, Mophy, the great, you know, Morphy, the, the great, you know, chess mastermind. Yeah, in the late 1800s, yeah. Yeah, but then you take us down the history of um, chess, and we find out that modern chess kind of exploded um, in Spain. And uh, by a Latinx um, uh, uh, chess player, and and one of the characters, Roddy, says, "Why don't we hear that history? You know, what teach? Why why are we why are we mm -hmm. whited out?" And you know, it, it's such a it's such a big uh, theme that is in first of all in Latin uh, history uh, for morons. And, and I'm just wondering, and, and in your, and, and in what you're doing, I feel like, you know, making this film is talking about that psycho, um, psycho social erasure. Yes. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> you're amazing, been... man. You're amazing. You, you're incredible. You, 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 do, you do such deep research. I mean, I, I could tell, I mean, you're, you're amazing. Uh, yeah. Psychosocial erasure, man. It's a thing that, that we've been, Latin people have been experiencing for 500 years because we didn't just get here. I mean, I don't know what this weird conception that we just are immigrating right now, but we discovered America 500 years ago. We built it up. The British took it from us and the Americans took the rest. And then we didn't stop there. You know, we continued to, to be in America. I mean, Latin people were the only ethnic group that's fought in every single war America's ever had. And we're the most awarded minority in each and every single one of those wars. 10,000 unknown Latino patriots fought in the American Revolution out of 80,000. That means we were one in eight. And Cuban women in Virginia sold the jewelry to feed the patriots. And we had this General Galvez who had an army of 3,000 Puerto Ricans, 
Cubans, Mexican Americans, freed slaves, and they, and and Native Americans, and they kicked the, the British out of the South, so they couldn't um, uh, trap the, the 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 Patriots, the New England Patriots, not the football team, the the Minutemen, up up in New England, and and then twenty thousand of us fought in the Civil War, and 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 then one hundred twenty thousand in World War One, and and then five hundred thousand of us fought in World War Two. But where are where where, where is all that? contributions where are all those stories where's the band of brothers where's the brown brother and band of brothers where's the history channel part of it this incredible uh gil bosques in world war ii uh, this mexican man saved forty thousand jews in france he rented two churches and put them put the jews in there to protect them against the vichy french the, and 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 then gave them asylum in mexico where's that story it's way more than Oscar Schindler. We're, oh, we're, 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 why can't we be celebrated for for doing great things? And, or or we, if not, forget about mediocre things. We don't we don't we don't survive in that in that medium. Everything we do has to be superlative, or or it's not noticed or seen or or, or respected. So, so yeah, that that's 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 kind of the whole battle and the whole fight. And luckily for now, COVID somehow has given us the time to, to reboot, for America to reboot and really think about things because we're home, because we're not as distracted, because we don't have jobs. We're, we're home and we're having to look at ourselves. Mm. And Black Lives Matter finally took off. You know, it finally was starting to make a change with the, 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 the quest to defund police, even though that term is kind of off because <laughs> the term is about uh, accountability. It's not really about, we don't, nobody wants the police to go away. We all know they are good cops, but they're not speaking out against the bad cops. And that's all we're asking for, for. Or they get punished for it. When a cop right. speaks out against a bad cop, they get fired, they get punished, they get harassed. That's the truth of the matter, you know? Right, uh, right, right. The good cops, when they, when they speak out. Cop, yeah, 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 when yeah. the good cop speaks out against a bad cop. Um, John, Absolutely. Oh. Actually, there was a great doc that came out, uh, Crime and Punishment, uh, two years ago, showing New York cops. And, and the fact that they were doing unspoken quotas and arresting Latin and black kids and destroying their lives, even though they were innocent. And, all, and the black and Latin cops in New York couldn't take it. So they spoke out and all 12 of them were punished, demoted, you know, uh, harassed. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I know. So I understand. I understand it's not easy, but we still need accountability. But, uh, but to wrap it up. Yes. Yeah, so this is a time where we're. we're America's looking at themselves and going, what are we doing? How are we not being inclusive? How are we, how are we excluding people? How are we mistreating people? How, what are we not doing to make this a better world? It's a beautiful moment, actually. It is. I think it's a really powerful time in American history. It really is. And, it, and, getting, to, and getting to, you know, the I'm getting fired up. <laughs> I'm ready to go campaign. Let's, I love it. Let's go, let's go flip right wing Cubans in Florida. <laughs> Come on, man. What's up with that? Talk I'm about a cup of coffee and I'm going to just run to Florida. I'm not even going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> John, so like in, in the, so in respect of the film and, and getting back to, you know, your impetus of making it, were, were all of those um, issues, I mean, clearly part of your decision of making this your directorial debut yeah no absolutely absolutely that 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 all fed me because you know i, I directed some commercials uh, and and i directed a movie for hbo and i didn't really i don't know i just I, it didn't click for me I, I i didn't feel that i was bringing in enough i wasn't enjoying it enough and it, it felt just a lot just like a lot of un, unwarranted stress mm. uh but this time i don't know i i just really click with the story i uh you know i knew where the kids came from i knew the neighborhood i i wasn't the lead i was it's really more an ensemble piece so that was big i got great actors who were director proof you know michael k williams rachel bay jones uh it's so beautiful in the movie and beautiful to work with so generous to come down for no money basically and 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 give up of their time and because they they love the story as well and and you know this time this time was different for me. This time I really felt that all the years of all the, the great directors I worked with, Baz Luhrmann, uh, yeah. Spike Lee, Ava DuVernay, uh, Brian De Palma, Tony Scott, Ridley Scott. Uh, 
I, I had learned, I had learned stuff. I had learned a lot that I didn't realize that I didn't realize that till this, that moment when I got on the set the first day, even before the first day, because I remembered Baz Luhrmann would have us rehearse, like for, for Romeo and Juliet, we rehearsed for two weeks, every day, long ass hours for right. Romeo and Juliet. And then for, for Moulin Rouge, we rehearsed a month before we shot the movie. And he would rewrite the script. We started out with a script that was 300 pages. And by the time we started shooting day one, it was 160, which is still unheard of, you know? So I got these kids, I said to them, look, I need you in Florida a week before. I know it's unheard of in independent films. Nobody does it, but we're going to rehearse and it's going to be 12 long hours. and You're going to hate me. But at the end of this, when you see the movie, you're going to love me. And, and we're going to rehearse every day after shooting. I know it's going to be long days. You're going to hate me. But at the end, you're going to love me. So I made them come down. They came down. I had the, the real guys, the real chess guys who are now about 40. Yeah. They came and they consulted. They showed us how to play chess, made them look like chess players. Because I wanted the real games they played. I didn't want to make up games. Yeah. I wanted the real games that they played in every championship. So I, yeah, I gave that to homework to the, to so the real guys. You, so that was part of the preparation. All the young actors um, had to learn those games. Yep. And, so they had, and they had to learn how to throw, you know, there's a swag to throwing down the piece. I saw that. Although, otherwise you look like an amateur. And I, you know, so I had to tell these guys, you got to walk around with chess pieces all day long, learning how to fling it because it can't fall over. This is an independent film. I only got a few takes. I know. So <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about that. 23 days, man. 23 days, all those different locations, all those different actors and you extras. And extras, and you, oh yeah, all the extras in the school, in the, in, and you're acting in it. You are a lead in it, man. You, it, it, it's a, it's, it is an ensemble, but you are definitely carrying <laughs> an enormous. Yeah, no, I, 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 I had a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, you, man. You, you know, you act, you, you act the director, so you know the amount of pressure oh. it takes. And you're oh. the same kind of actor as me. Like we're both. I mean, I don't know if you studied method, but I studied method and, and Bill Esper and Uta Hagen. So I, I had all three. I was uh, Stella Adler, one of uh, Esper. That was Esper's teacher. Right, right, right. Stella, the, the great Stella Adler, who, yeah. who trained uh, De Niro. Uh, Brando. Uh, 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 Brando. Uh, Benicio Toro. That's right. All uh, the O's. And you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ruffalo. And Mark Ruffalo. I mean, it, it, what, what great teachers. I mean, you, you can't be, a, I just can't, you can't be a great actor if you haven't studied, man. I mean, I agree. that. You just, it's just impossible. Then you're just a dilettante and an amateur and I, and I have no time for that shit. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so what was it like? That's a lot, John, to do 23, was it 23 days? 23 days for a movie that should have been 60 days, $3 million for a movie that should have been 10 to $15 million. But you know, all, that, all those director things that I learned from Baz Luhrmann, I learned from, from uh, uh, Spike Lee, you know, from when we did Summer Sam, you know, he made us, and Adrian Brody and Mary Serena us, made us hang out all the time. Because he says, you can't manufacture that relationship right. on camera. You need, guys need to hang out and learn to love each other. <laughs> and so I tell these guys, you got to hang out and love each other because you can't, man so I repeat it, regurgitate everything Spike said to me. And, and the kids did it. And, and, we, and we, we, we did become a team, man. I love these guys. Yeah. And, really. and, and, and because, you know, you know, you can't, you can't no. fudge that. No, I wanted to ask, were, did, they get, did they spend a lot of time together? And were you, Yeah, were they were they? playing chess all the time. They knew, they knew what the task was, and, they, and they, they really came, you know, they really delivered, man. I, I was so proud of their commitment because it wasn't easy, man. The chess stuff was, was really tough. I, was, I had to, like, you know, I had to get shots quick because, you know, there was no time. And, you know, I was always fighting the clock in daylight. And, and tough neighbors, we shot – oh, snap, sorry. <laughs> I, for, I, I forgot to hit airplane mode. Um, At least you didn't do a Chris Evans. Oh, damn. <laughs> I almost did a Chris Evans. I was like doing the AirPods thing, doing a Zoom rehearsal. And, all, and I said, excuse me, I just go to the bathroom. And I forgot the AirPods don't turn oh, off. And I was like, oh, man. I started hearing. I was like, oh, yo, you're, you're hearing me, aren't you? Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. I don't poor Chris. That's wrong. Hey, um, so... So these kids, did they, did they, yeah, man, they have such a good rapport and they work so well together. I was wondering, you did do a week's worth of rehearsal with them. What, oh, what yeah. kind of stuff were you doing with them? Were you going through the scenes? Were you? Yeah. So we did, we did, you know, scene, a scene breakdown, you know, we went through every scene. We started with the beginning of the script 
and then the games, you know, and then boom, we spent a lot of time with each game. And I asked these guys, what were the moves? Uh, how can I show uh, a passage of time and progression in their learning, you know? And then I asked the, the teacher, the big thing was the teacher. I had, I had to crack that code. That was a little harder. It was like, chess is a mental game. So how do I show what's going on in somebody's head? Because you can only do this so much, so many times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, and, then, and then, you know, put beats of sweat. But at some point, this stuff becomes really monotonous and boring. So I had to try to externalize sort of their mental processes. And uh, when the teacher told me, you know, I said, what did you do, man? How do you, well, we have these little, you know, papers and, and exercises and, and the, the books. And I wanted to give them book knowledge. I go, I saw that. I saw that. But how, what else did you do? When he told me he had this magnetic board where he would have all the pieces and he would go over the games over and over. That was my key, man. And I was like, oh, right. Now I just had to find the right uh, strategies that would be visual and cinematic so the audience would understand and feel like they were learning chess like the kids. And, and um, had those kids played chess before? They played a little chess. Will, Will was actually a real good player. The other kids just learned on the moment and got as good as Will. The kid who played uh, Duchamp? Um, what was his name? Uh, Marcel. Marcel Martinez, the real kid, is uh, Jeff yeah. Batista. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Batista. No, he didn't play. He didn't play as much. Wow. He had to learn. Because the, the real guy, the real guy can do, you know, that blindfolded chess thing. He can do 10 guys. And that blind chess is like, they usually put a explain blindfold. Explain that to them. Yeah, explain to people. Right, what right, right. They either, either put a blindfold on you or they turn you away from the board. And he can do 10 people. In the movie, we did five. And they call out their moves and then he calls a move back and he doesn't look and he's playing five people at the same time. So he's anyway. visualizing that each chessboard of each player that he's playing against and he can... and, and moves and he's picturing moves. Cause you gotta, in chess, you gotta be three to five moves or more ahead. So that's genius. I mean, that's, that's a great scene in the movie where, where, where uh, the character of um, Marcel is playing five of the other guys and he kicks their asses, all of them. And that's, that's, based, that's true, right? That that's true. That's, he, he, can, he can beat 10. That's amazing. Now, let me ask you this. Did you spend a lot of time with the coach, with, um, with Mario? Is yeah, yeah. Mario? Mario, Mario, Mario Martinez. Yeah, did you, you know, spend the, the a lot of time with him? Yes, I did. I did. I had to. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm method. I, you know, I studied with Lee Strasberg for one day, and my acting killed him. True story. <laughs> he died that night. Yeah, yeah, seriously. <laughs> I, re I read that. That's amazing. No, it's true. I'm not making it up. I know. 19, I read 1982, that. I was in his class. One day, I did a sense memory <laughs> exercise, which is, uh, you know, recalling, you know, some, some BS. And, and you had to sensorially recreate, like, a coffee cup or... Or, or water or, or orange. You got to recall the, 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 the smell, the taste, the weight. Anyway, he was, he was like, that, that's terrible. That's terrible. Do, do something better. And he had like a speaking, a breathing issue. And then he passed. Yeah, he had the uh, tracheotomy, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, let and then me Herbert Berghoff. I killed Herbert Berghoff too. I was in his class for two years. And you killed him? <laughs> I hope I don't die tonight. <laughs> no, I know, man. It's a... <laughs> hey, I want to go back to that just so people know that sensory memory um, exercise. That, that's, a big, that's a big exercise. And, and, you know, for people who don't know acting, you know, what, what that gives you, uh, you know, what it... What did you it... know that? You know, did you do method? Did you do a little method? Yeah, we did a lot of that. We did a, we did a lot of using... Still Adler? There. Yeah, it was Stella Adler. Oh, oh yeah. She, did, she, she had the Stanislavski method as well. That's yeah, why. totally. Okay. Yep. She, right, right. Both, you know, they split, but they were both yeah. started from that same school. And, you know, do, the, do, you know do, you, do you know what the split was about? I can never remember what the, what the beef yeah. was. It was about, um, you know, Stella, uh, I guess at some point, it, you know, Strasberg was using m mostly your own personal experiences, and Stella said you oh, had to break right. free from that and move into the imagination. Use yourself as a starting point, but don't keep pulling. She didn't. She didn't feel like you could keep pulling from your own experience mm. every night and and grow as an actor. You were pulling the material down to your um, pedestrian life when the when the play the ideas of the playwrights were much bigger than one life wow. one or universal. So you had to pull yourself up yeah. into the imagination, which was expansive. And That's a big break. That's a big break because you know I mean the, 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 to, for me the method 
was groundbreaking. I mean, I'd just come from Uta Hagen and Herbert Berghoff, which was all seen analysis, pre previous circumstances. We're going to get mad actor nerd now. <laughs> We're going to get super actor nerd. Uh, so it was, you know, previous circumstances, uh, objective, you know, and, and obstacles, you know, that it was very, very, very heady, you know, but it would release emotions when you're doing all these uh, uh, physical act, and you also had to have physical activities. Yeah, but then I went to Method and and with Strasbourg in that school and doing all this sensorial stuff and, you know, recreating imaginary people, um, substitution, um, you know, uh, environments. You create environments, but you you go to a real environment and then you recreate it by yourself yeah. in a different space where it doesn't exist. But yeah. that's the stuff that helped me do one man shows because I never felt alone on stage. I I because of sense memory and all that I would see the people and the location so i wasn't i never felt alone on stage yeah do you know what i mean yeah and all those all those exercises you know were were to, were to build the the uh, muscles of memory of, of imagination of imagination, yeah, yeah. Of imagination and concentration know? and focus all that at the same That's time right. yeah, yeah. and give you something to hold on to when you you're not walking out onto a stage you're walking into a place that you've built in your imagination right 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 you're not you're not aware of yourself it takes you from your self-awareness so that you can just behave because we you if you trust your instrument, it will do the right thing. It was a Maureen Stapleton said, don't, don't move your body. Let, let your impulses move your body. Carry you. Right, right. That's right. Uh, I love that, man. We could do a whole, <laughs> I could, we could talk Acting about Acting ma master class. Yeah, why not? Totally. Why not? I would love let's to. Break, let's break it down for the pedestrian folk out That's there, right, the, man. The lay, the lay person. Yeah, that all of that, all of that education was really. I mean, listen, you're one of the most diverse actors. You've played everything. You know, you've done. You know, total realism to to you know to to expressionism to impressionism to you know the wildest things down to the quietest things. And I think that really um, comes from how much training that you actually got and your stage work. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's the training, bro. It's, it really, right. And it's a combination of stage. And I mean, all the great actors did a ton of stage. Brando, That's Street right. Corning Desire, man. Uh, the right. cafe, the truck line cafe, whatever it was called, That's his right. first play. That's De Niro, right. Pacino, they all did stage. All of them. Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> yeah, I, like I saw you in that play. I, saw, I didn't see the off-Broadway one, but I saw the Broadway one. Did you uh, do it on Broadway? This is our youth? Uh, I didn't do no, it. No, you did. It was off-Broadway. It was off-Broadway. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did it off-Broadway. But thank you, man. Um, uh, so listen, I wanted to, um, just to keep talking about the movie, um, how many places did you have to take? I mean, I, we kind of glossed over this, but how many places did you have to take it to get it made, John? I mean, it took you how many years? Two, three years to get it made? Two, two years for me. I mean, but Carla Berkowitz, the producer. 20 years. 20 years, you know. Carla Berkowitz, yeah, the executive yes. producer. Who's Venezuelan. And uh, she's been championing this. You know, she, she, she got this other guy, Harvey Chaplin, from Brooklyn, who's 90 years old right now. He's also... Um, He's got COVID right now, so it's it's kind of a scary time for all of us because you know he's he's at that you know very vulnerable age, yeah. and and with this virus, so he's he's been hospitalized, um, and and he this kid from Brooklyn, he was this tough kid from Brooklyn, he became a, a billionaire th uh, with uh, spirits, fell in love with this co this story when he heard it in the Miami Herald because he lives in Florida now, and he's been funding the rights, and he funded the movie himself. And so he's been championing this because he saw himself in these kids, you know, even though he's this Jewish kid from way back, you know, <laughs> in early 1900s, yeah. he, he saw himself, you know, like these immigrant kids, like he, he was that, like the same kind of tough kid, tough neighborhood and made himself, you know, pull himself by the boot, bootstraps. Yeah. And living in, living on, on the edges of America, you know, unseen. I mean, mm. you, know, I, you know, this story... So I'm I'm an Italian, I'm a second generation Italian immigrant. My my grandfather had the same story, you know. He had to like he had to like you know scrap his way up from nothing, you know, sleeping in a in a one room a one bedroom place with twelve brothers and sisters, you know, fighting in the morning who got the pair of shoes so they could get out of the house. <laughs> yeah, right. they were stuck with grandma who was like a, a a taskmaster and worked them to worse than they were would have to work on the streets, but you know. This, so, <laughs> This is this, but this is this is specific to you know Latinx and and Black um, youth, um, and but it's also a, a, a greater story 
about about making it in America, mm. about having to fight up from these these ghettos, these 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 places where people are pushed to the edges um, by to- by redlining. Exactly. By, you, you know, I mean, the, 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 the problem now, you know, um, Latin kids are 30% of the public schools in America. And, you know, in New York City, black and Latin kids are over 50% of the population, but we never get to the gold standard public schools. We can't make it to Stuyvesant. We can't make it to Brooklyn Tech or Bronx Science. We just not, less than 7% of Latin and black kids in a city that's predominantly black and Latin don't get to the best schools that are, are, were made to get you out of the ghetto in the early 1900s for all the other immigrants. We're, 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 we just can't get there. And, and there's a lot of obstacles. There was this great test, and I can never remember the, 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 the name of it. Um, I think it's a Brower uh, School Education. Anyway, they were wondering why Latin and Black kids are not getting into the gifted programs. They couldn't understand it. So they went in there, and they started doing research, and they found out that it was the parents profiling their own kids and, and not picking them to be in the gifted classes, keeping them from that, not believing them, and the teachers profiling them, only believing that the white kids were gifted. So they took that out and they did universal tests. And when they did the universal tests and took out the human element, the parents and the teachers, then the classes filled up with Latin and black kids because now they, they, they could measure up. And I, and I feel like Latin people, we, we win wherever there are metrics. Wherever there are measurables, we're winning, man. I mean, Jay Balvin, my Colombian brother, who's a rapper, is number one on Spotify. Beat Drake, because you can measure that. Uh, my Dominican sister, Cardi B, is on Billboard number one, because you can measure the scans. Uh, Maluma, Colombian brother. Uh, Bad Bunny, um, Puerto Rican brother. Ozuna, uh, they're, they're all up there. Camila Cabello, my Cuban sister, all up in Billboard because you can measure those scans. Baseball, we're killing it because you can measure those statistics. Yes. Politics, AOC, and, and uh, 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 Veronica Escobar in El Paso, uh, okay. Cindy Polo in Miami, Debbie Mercasat Powell, Ecuadorian sister in, in Miami, all winning votes because you can count votes. But wherever it, we have to rely on somebody's opinion or taste, like an executive at a streamer or network, yeah. we lose because... They don't see us. They don't get us. Yeah. You know, they, they don't care about us. They don't give a F about us. And, and we just, you know, fall by the wayside. And so many gifted and talented Latin kids, those dreams just are wasted, you know, wasted lives. Yeah, in the story, you have um, the character Ido. So, you know, obviously, one of, the, one of the major things, and it was in the synopsis, is these kids, they don't have the money to go to these tournaments. Yeah. Mm-mm. And so they're left to raise the, this money on their own. And at one point they have to turn, I mean, it's, it's a funny bit in the film, but they have to turn towards drug dealing, you know? <laughs> I mean, they're, yeah. selling, they're selling weed laced cookies. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Like, that, that was a tough, drug, that was not a tough drug thing. dealing anymore. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like fun these days. I mean, everyone's doing it, but in the, <laughs> in the story, you know, then you have the character Ido. Who, who is, you know, who's being groomed by, um, you know, a drug dealer uh, in the neighborhood. And so you see, you know, you have these, I guess, these psychological barriers. Um, you have the world telling them, like in the bell curve, like, like what happened to you, telling these young people that they're not smart, they're not right. equal, they're, they don't have the same thing. And then you have just the pressures of an economic system that they've been left out of. You talk about redlining. You know, this is multi-generations. These are decades of communities that oh, haven't yeah. been able to get uh, loans, that haven't been mm-hmm. able to cr- or create new businesses, that haven't had any of the economic ability to, to go up in our culture, like the rest of people, mostly white people, ha- have had. I mean, some of them work their way out of, the, out of these places. But, um, you know, I guess. I mean, Mark, Mark, to your point, to your point, sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, right, right. I mean, it, it, it's not just what's happening now. It's, it's, it's centuries old. I mean, right. between 1830 and 1930, 6,000 Latin people were lynched, burned alive, and shot in the Southwest, in Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, 
uh, Southern California because they wanted to take away their land, wanted to take away their power, uh, wanted to take away their homes, scare them. Uh, and, and, you, and you have to survive that. So I went to uh, Marfa, Texas, and, and there was this old church from the late 1800s. It was a school. And there's a plaque there, and it said that they used to make Latin children children bury Spanish words so they would never speak Spanish again. Like these weird little sort of like cultural destruction of your culture and rejection of your culture. Yeah. Uh, so that that's a systematic thing. You know, in the 1930s, Woodrow Wilson created the Repatriation Act, where he deported a million American citizens. Land people who are American, it's the first time in the history of America where they took American citizens and deported them. They didn't do it to any other ethnic group and took away their homes, took away their, their, their ranches and their power, their money, and, and, and sent them back to, to, to Mexico. It's crazy. So how does a, a community keep rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding and, and surviving all these struggles? And right now, land people contribute 2.3 trillion dollars to the U.S. economy every year. If we were our own country, we'd be the eighth largest economy in the world. Right. Our women are number one in small business creations at 87%. And we saved the housing market last year at 68%. So the, we're still, even with all the struggles, I feel like that's, that's the Latin personality. Like we're resilient, no matter, you, you, we were the, we're the only culture in the whole world where in the conquest, our religion, was destroyed, our language was destroyed, and our culture was destroyed. So we, we have to start from zero to recreate ourselves, you know, learn a conquest uh, language, conquest religion, and still keep going. And society. And, and here we are, you know, so that, that, that I attribute to, I think my resilience in America and, and my being able to, to work in Hollywood is because of that inheritance of that emotional resilience. And so that's what's in the film, man. I mean, that's... that's <laughs> I it. hope so. I hope some of it trickled in. It really <laughs> is. It really is. And, and it's beautiful. I mean, you know, what does it mean for those kids to win the championship? There's not another kid like them. There wasn't another... Right. You know, there wasn't another kid, especially men, you know, the, the only time you saw a person of color in the movie playing chess against them in chess was, was, um, was women. Right, right. And so you had these young men who like had transcended all of these toxic male ideas. Right, right. Toxic male masculinity. Yep. Yes. In, in the Latin and, and black culture and, yep. you know, and in white culture as well. Um, and, and they, and they became champions, you know, it's, it's, um, it's just a, a beautiful metaphor for, for what you're talking about. And by the way, what you have accomplished you know, I'm watching this movie and I'm thinking, this is John's story. You know, this is in some way, this is a reflection of John's journey, you know? Um, mm, absolutely. I, I, I agree. I agree, Mark. I mean, definitely I felt, I felt, I felt like I was them, you know, that, I think that's what made me feel that, like, that, that I really dug this story with, and connected with it because I, I, I was them. That, that was me back in the day. You know, I had a lot of trouble. I was a problem kid. You know, uh, you know, I hate my kids to hear this, but I mean, I was arrested a couple of times and whatnot. And I was hanging out with the wrong, the wrong kind of kids uh, just because I felt like, you know, the system was against me. So why should I even try? You know, I don't want to be I didn't want to be clowned by the system. Yeah. So why participate in it? I'd rather go against it and win on my own terms, you know, and. Uh, and I feel like I'm not alone because. Latin people are the highest high school dropout rate in the, in the country, you know, and we don't see ourselves in the history textbooks. So how do you feel like, how do you see yourself in the future or, 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 or feeling full of self-worth if you don't see yourself in the literature you're reading, you don't see anybody who looks like you and, and nobody sees you that way either. So they don't, they don't project positive things onto you either. So why, why do I want to participate in that system that's always putting me down and I don't see a possibility of succeeding? So as a young man, you know, I was going to go the opposite. I was the black sheep in the family. I was, you know, constantly, you know, I was almost expelled from school because I was always disrupting classes because I thought that was my way of having fun in school was, you know, locking teachers out of the room, getting the kids to, to walk out of school, 
you know, stopping the water fountain so the water would shoot really hard and knock the teacher's toupee off, <laughs> keeping teachers in elevators. You know, I'd, I'd hit the button and run around the room, cracking jokes, you know, talking back. So, you know, I, I was mad disruptive. And the school made me go to therapy, which, you know, I was, you know, as a young man, that was not a thing I wanted to do. No. But, you know, it saved me. Therapy, say, at 17, I used to go to uh, Girls and Boys Institute on 19th Street in Irving Place. And... Uh, Mrs. Buxenbaum was my therapist and, 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 and saved me. So, so, so that's great because, you know, this Martinez, you know, what saved you? Was it, was it, was it the care? Was it somebody putting their attention on you in a positive way and, and caring about you? Yeah. yeah. And, and this, uh, you know, Mario Martinez, you know, he's fighting everything, you know, mm -hmm. the character you play in the movie. He's fighting, you know, he's fighting the poverty. He's, he's fighting the uh, social psycho erasure, psychological erasure. Psychosocial erasure. Yeah, psychosocial erasure. Yeah, that's he, a new term for the COVID era, for the oh, Black Lives buddy, Matter. Buddy, it's such a good term. It's a dumb and, term. Um, sad term, but yeah. It's a sad term, but it's a tr it's a true. It's yeah. True. Uh, and then he's also fighting against the the redlining, the, the, the defunding of these schools, you know, what is it that, that, you know, I guess as a boy thinking back of your experience, but also mm. playing that character, what is it that, that the kids related to that, that made them trust him, that made him, that made them decide, you know what, I'm going right. to, I'm going to put this street life away. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to, I'm going to do a positive thing for myself. I'm going to take the chance of being ridiculed for being a chess. Right. Player. Right. Cause that's what that's, that's also, I mean, th that used to be in the movie a little bit more, but it got taken out was how they were picked on by yeah. the, 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 the rougher kids, you know, making fun of them for, for being ghetto nerds, because that's that's what happens. You end up being an outsider in a, in your own community, because you're not doing the cool thing. You know, you're not you're not being cool, and so they had they had to deal with that. But this teacher, man, when I met Mario, he's he's all in, man. He's all in. He loves him unconditionally. He's an incredible human being, and and uh, and I fell in love with him. And I was like, no wonder. The, I mean, when you hang out with the guys, they love each other, man. They love chess. They love each other. They rib each other. They're always they're always knocking each other down but it's fun. It's fun to be with them. And I was like, that's, that's the glue of this whole thing. And, and Cedric was the big glue back in the day uh, that playing by, by Corwin Tuggles. He, he was my, he was like, when I found out that he was the one that really went out there and, and got them all and brought them all and kept them together. It, it, that, that became like, Oh, that's a big, that's a big deal. It was the teacher and this one guy who really started falling in love with the chess. And and those guys, how how are they now? They show up in the end of the movie. It's a great it's a great thing that you do by bringing them in and showing them with Martinez. How how are those guys? I mean, you know, you, you have them talking a little bit about how important chess was to them in their lives. How how are they now? Are they are they? Oh, they're doing well. They're doing well. You know, I mean, uh, Gil Luna, who's half Cuban, played by Will Hutchman, uh, he's still teaching chess. Has t been teaching t chess his whole life to high schools in Miami, uh, and. Um, uh, Radale Medina was, was teaching chess, but then he went to real estate. He might go back to online uh, teaching chess. Uh, Ido and Cedric both moved to Atlanta, both working for telephone companies. Uh, and Marcel, did I think, Ido, is in real did estate. Ido get out of the, did Ido get off the streets? Did yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ido, you know, when I was talking to him, when I was hanging out, he said, this chess saved his life. It really saved his life. It taught him the, how to think better, how to make better decisions. And it gave him a, 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 a different perspective on life. And it, they, so, you know, he works for a telephone company in, uh, in Atlanta now. And, and uh, Marcel Martinez is in, in, in real estate in Miami. Great. This is a, a question from one of our audience members who's, who's, who's listening so intently here today. Um, what is your favorite part about both jobs of acting and directing? That's a great question. Oh, well, well, the acting has always been sort of to uh, express, I don't know, express a lot of feelings that I think uh, were bottled up in me and to be, and also, also love being in somebody else's shoes for some reason. My, 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 mind, my mind always was, always loved other professions, you know, like, you know, uh, detectives and, and firemen and, and and stockbrokers, I was like, what is their lives? What you know? That, 
I, I guess that's part of an actor's imagination and always wanting to be empathic about other people. And uh, directing, I think it was, it was a little bit of a power thing that I really dug. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I mean, running a whole set, everybody coming to you, it, it was pretty uh, intoxicating. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and be able to shape scenes in the way that you saw them. You know you know how you are with, with the directors. You have to kind of commiserate and, and, and you have to, you know, uh, collaborate. And I, and I was collaborative as well with the kids, but I was also running the scenes and, get, and steering them to a place where I wanted them to go. So, were you, so that, were you that was fun. Directing them from inside. Was that were, were you directing them from inside the scene? Were you were you giving them notes while while you were while you were in the scene, or would you? Would After you, you, you know, so I take a beat. You know, so I didn't have a lot of time. So I know. Sometimes I, you know, I love the monitor, but I couldn't. I really have the time sometimes to go back to the monitor. So I was got. You know, I didn't feel right, and uh, I know how. I know my, I'm going to do some adjustments for myself, and then you know, tell the other kids. You know, can you just you know, pick up either pick up cues a little bit or step on each other kind of thing. Let's step on each other. Let's not be precious about dialogue. Okay. This is not yeah. Shakespeare. So just, you know, let's pick up the pace, that kind of, you know, that kind of stuff. And John, was it, um, did you find that, uh, I, you know, when I directed, I found that, you know, as a director, you're, you're looking at everything. I mean, you, you got eyes and ears on the whole thing, but as an actor, you're, you're, you're so different. Yeah. So I know. I know. That's hard, man. That, yeah, Talk about that's balance. a hard balance, balance man that is a hard balance my first movie that i did that i was in as well that was that I, that was a problem for me because i was so used to being in my head inside and lost in the cat getting lost it was the beauty of acting right just getting lost in, in it not knowing what you're doing and it yeah. just happens yeah but as a director you're right you have to like be aware of the lighting of the sound uh the pace of the scene the dialogue is the story coming across. Is the acting coming across? Uh oh, we're running out of time. You know, now be your character. It's really hard to get back. Luckily, yeah. Martinez was a little more performative. You know what I mean? In some ways, so yeah. that helped me a little bit instead oh, of yeah, like he's you know running the show. He's, right. He's, yeah. So yeah, that that works. So directing and being that teacher were, were in similar uh, career paths. You know what I mean? Similar. Totally. Skill totally. sets. That really so that helped me. That that helped me link up. Clearly, that really worked for you, man. Good job. So here's another one uh, for for both of us. Um, now now that what? a fi- sorry, oh now that a few films gave uh, 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 films have resumed shooting, and given that acting is mostly a direct face to face profession right. without masks, how are you both feeling about having to act on set with other actors uh, during the and crew during the time? Of you project? go. You go first. I mean, listen. Uh, it, the, I mean, I've been acting now for 20 plus years, uh, you know, with, with no more than maybe a month or two between, between jobs. And wow. so I, uh, you know, uh, it's been hard to be uh, still mm. this, this amount of time, but I also have been, man, it's been such a gift to be with my family. This right, week, right. You know, and uh, all that busyness, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, in a hurry to get back to, but I have talked to some people who are on set right now and they say it's, it's just so crazy. Like half the crew is wearing hazmat suits and they're in goggles and face masks. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I mean, I'm interested to get back to work. Uh, like I said, I'm not in a hurry, but uh, yeah, it's a whole different time. I mean, what, what's your feeling on it? I, I don't know how to feel about it, really. It's going to be weird. But but it, it was interesting what you said, because the same thing, I felt like, you know, I've been working so so much, you know, whatever stage or writing, whatever, or movies, but it was the first time that I got a chance to like reboot and be home, be with my kids, even though they, they got sick of me. But <laughs> But I loved the time to be with them as they're adults now, my kids, you know, college kids. So it was so great to be able to be with them and see them. And, and, you know, cause they had no choice <laughs> and they had no friends. So they had to hang out with me and play board games with maybe played a lot of Bach. <laughs> there were categories. I love board games. I like beating. I like, I'm very competitive. Uh, but now they beat me at Boggle. Now that they got college kids, I don't know. They're beating me. Um, but creatively, I found that it was incredible not to be, doing busy work you know like just working for the sake of working i was like able to really focus on passion projects so i've been writing a ton things that i that i really wanted to write that i'd never found the time i had a million excuses to to avoid um great, John. but going back to work i mean obviously only minuscule budgets 
or super huge budgets are working right now because you can't have a production with you know doctors covid uh quarantining hotels you can't you can't function so only tiny minuscule budgets micro budgets or macro big expensive and then you know ethan i've been talking to ethan uh uh and, and he, 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 he was also getting, you know, antsy being home too much and not working. So, so he just did a, um, uh, the Vikings movie in Ireland. And he said it was weird. He doesn't know, he doesn't even know who the people are he's working with, except for the actors, obviously, because they test all, because everybody's like this. Yeah. He doesn't even know who, who they are. Yeah. That's going to be weird. Because, you know, we have so much interaction with the crew and yeah. the other actors. And, and, yeah, I mean, I, you know. But I, 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 feel, I feel safe if everybody's testing every day. I mean, I'm, you know, sure. you're taking temperatures, you're testing, you're quarantining. I, I think I'm going to feel safe. Buddy, you know? I mean, we, know, we know how over, over the top the film industry goes, you know. They're, right, they're, right. They're, so you're going to feel we'll safe. If we're there, then we would be at home, you know, basically. Right, right, right. Hey, listen, uh, just to, uh, I want to get, before we go, let's talk yeah, politics, yeah. man. <laughs> Our fa- yeah yeah you're doing great stuff with the, with the political s- system i mean the, all you do, your psas are incredible fighting against indian point fighting fighting against fra- uh, fracking you know okay. fracking is what's causing these crazy earthquakes nobody talks about that oh everywhere ohio everywhere yeah. man even los angeles uh all the, you know where they, they man they have a you know they have that that those wells right in the yep. middle of uh, you know going the, down south near south central going to the airport exactly yep. yes once again in, in 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 communities of color man they're on the right. front lines of this shit but um you know you know how do people how do we influence the people that have closed their eyes to donald trump's deceit you know, how, how do we, how do we get through to them or, or, or are they lost? Are they just lost? Are we, are I they think lost they're lost, the man. You know, you know, there's a big saying that, you know, Republicans fall in line. I mean, uh, Democrats fall in love, Republicans fall in line. And it's not, it's not untrue. It's a, you know, it's a truism, you know, uh, like, like, you know, Florida is a big swing state. Yeah. And, and Latin people are 32. We're, the, we're going to decide the president is 32 million registered voters. We're the largest voting block outside of white people. Right. And Florida is a big swing state. And 73% of Latin people are Democrats, 27% are Republican. Most of them are right wing uh, Cubans in Florida and some right wingers in, in, uh, in, in the Southwest, uh, Mexicans who, are, who, are, who go right wing, kind of self hating. If I may, if I may say that, um, I, I think what we, I think what we have to do, man, to win, we're not going to convince any of them to flip. To they're just not. They're just locked in with their Fox News, their Breitbart's, whatever they're they're watching misinformation and propaganda. We we lost them, but we gotta incentivize young Latinx, the Latinx generation. We gotta in, incentivize. We gotta inspire them to register. They're not. They're not feeling the love. They're not feeling, you know, inspired. And we need to go to Florida and turn them around, man. I mean, and in, and in Texas, we can flip Texas. 40% Latin and 12% black. It should be mad blue. Obviously, they got crazy gerrymandering and, and, and voter suppression over there. I mean, you know, in, 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 in Texas, it's a felony to register somebody to vote. You have to be deputized. You know how often the deputizing office is open? once or twice a year. And you can't deputize outside of the tiny geographic area they give you. It's a felony. So they make it really hard and almost so impossible. Just to register. Just to, to register. register. Not even this is a, a democracy. Why are you making it so hard to vote? Well, we know why. Why isn't this a national holiday, God damn it? We know why. Now well, let yeah, me ask yeah, you yeah. this. So, so you said, you know, so a lot of, but a lot of young people feel like, you know, maybe Biden doesn't speak for them, you know, what, right. would, you, what would you say to them? Because that's a conversation that I've been having and, and you know, young yeah. Latinx people better than I yeah. do. Like, what, what do you say to them about, you know, being on the fence? I don't relate to him. You know, how, how, how do you talk about that? And how do you, wow. get- I mean, that, that's, that's a great question, man. I don't even know if I have the answer for that. You know, uh, I, I'm questioning myself. How do I, flip these kids how do i turn them on you know do i go to florida and try to flip them you know i mean how, how do you like talking to my son to how, how do i motivate him you know uh, obviously the rest of us we love biden we love kamala harris we we love the cabinet he's gonna have we love yeah. saving democracy we love saving the american empire before it, nero burns it uh, and you know we're voting against trump and we're yeah. voting for 
democracy against authoritarian uh, regime that he's, that he's creating with Bill Barr. Uh, so that's easy for us. The kids, yeah. uh, I mean, the environment, God damn it. This guy believes in your environment. I think talking to them about environment, um, what else? <laughs> uh, uh, what about, you know, what about uh, school debt? Jobs. You know? Which one? School debt, you know, uh, canceling some of this debt these kids are, are walking out of college with, with 200000 is, is, Bi is Biden proposing that? I, haven't, I hadn't heard if he was uh, well, doing that. Well, you know, that's one of the things that, I, that the young people want. You know, I guess for me, it's like speaking to them about their needs. What they want is right. like jobs. They want jobs. Jobs for all Latin people. That's why Stop. Bernie had us, because he talked about jobs That's and, right. and health care. That's healthcare right. Health is big. Jobs, health care, uh, student debt, uh, um, some kind forgiveness, of- Forgiveness, student debt forgiveness, yep. You know, or just freezing, freezing the interest on student debt would be helpful, you know? Kids yeah. are walking out- well, That's know, a great too. point. That's a great point, Mark. You know? I was gonna so, write it down, well, but I didn't want to look stupid. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, do you think that this the new this Democratic Party with uh, AOC, with the squad, with all of these young um progressives coming up, do you think that young people will start to see the Democratic Party as, as a party that's that's geared towards their needs, what they need in the world? Um, yeah, I th I think these new young exciting progressive democrats and we need to nurture them because they're going to be the future presidents the future nancy pelosi's and they're going to motivate this this young latinx generation and all all, all this young generation you know that that's true because they speak to them yes. in their language they're almost close to them in age you know yes. i mean aoc being the youngest congresswoman in the, in the history of uh, american history she was only 29 i think she was at the time yes but so she's closer to the generation to talk to them about the issues. But I, but I think you're hitting a lot of the good points, though, uh, Mark. I mean, to we try could, to flip, we to try to voting, incentivize. We could say voting for Biden and, and Kamala is voting for AOC and, and the squad. Right, right. Young, young, young progressives that they're turned on about. And, 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 not, and, not, scare, and not scare independents <laughs> and not scare centrist uh, Republicans or centrist uh, Democrats. Right. They're yeah. How, 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 anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully they're on board. I mean, I, I think Lincoln Project is really helping us with with suburban women. You know, they, because they're really speaking to them directly. Yeah, directly. Suburban women, suburb, suburban women are leaving Trump in droves. There was just a uh, there was a Minnesota. Oh, thank God, man. Thank God, because you know what happened. We to can't be the only ones seeing the truth. Come on. <laughs> How, how does not anybody else seem that they're voting against their own self best interest? I mean, how is that? He's going to take away health care. He's going to take away existing pre existing conditions. He's destroying your social security and Medicare. Medicare. That's right. He's taking it away. He's and taking he it all away. Rights away from he's women. Destroying your environment. Your national. He's destroying your your national parks. <laughs> it's it's right. We got to vote. And, so frustrating. But you know man. what? It's so, so exciting, man. I, you know, I think there's an exciting future ahead of us by by making this choice. You know, we have we we're gonna we're gonna start dealing. Look at climate change, man. Climate change is about to engulf um, yep. Florida yep. right now. It's it's engulfed um, uh, the California Coast. in flames. Yep. You know, um, and, they had 120 degree weather in Woodlawn in the valley. That's never been 120 never, degrees. Never been heard of. Never happened in the history of recorded of yep. recorded uh, temperature taking. Yep. So 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 you know, but you know, the the Green New Deal will create five hundred thousand five hundred five million more jobs, and we'll lose to the fossil fuel industry. I mean, this is this is where the world is moving, and I mm -hmm. and and just uh, to end this, John, what what do you want to see happen in the world? What what like what what do you imagine like? a beautiful thing that could happen. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, obviously if Joe Biden wins, I feel like I can relax a little bit because this, this news media porn thing is, is really wearing me out. Oh my God. And it's just, I just, I, you know, I, I, I'm I, the one, the good things about Trump is he, he's like a giant enema flushing all the bullshit out of this country. So we can finally tackle it because, you know, the systemic racism was there before Trump. You know, I, I've been dealing with my whole life. So it didn't feel like new. It just felt, you know, more under a, a, a microscope. Um, and, and, you know, I hopefully we, 
we do lock in uh, checks and balances because they don't exist. Obviously, the Constitution, I thought, was uh, uh, this, this incredible document that there was more than a document. It was like a, a natural law, but it's not. It's just a piece of paper, and, it, and, and we're only agreed to it voluntarily. But if we stop agreeing to follow the rules, and it, it, it shreds. It's nothing. Well, so hopefully we have some real checks and balances. Hopefully we can get accountability from the police. Um, you know, and start funding our schools because the magic, sorry about that. Again, I forgot, I, I forgot to put the, the, the thing in my jig, the airplane mode. Um, the, the, the magic bullet for public schools is just money. We have great teachers in America. That's we right. have the schools. They just need to be funded, supplied, cleaned, and, and, and smaller classes, more teachers, just put money. Betsy DeVos defunded the public school system by $9 billion with her BS voucher program that is only going to help rich white people That's because right. charter schools are, are uh, sorry about that. God damn it. Because charter schools are a great idea, but only for the exceptional kids in those neighborhoods. What happens That's to right. all the rest of us? That's we just right. fall through the cracks. That doesn't work. Just more money into public schools, That's protect right. our national parks, protect our environment. I mean, if you can see all these things happen, man, you know, green deals like you're talking about, Public a, works. Where are the public works? Why is Mitch McConnell blocking everything? Oh, he, he's killed everything. He won't let anything come come to... They That's what FDR to did to save America from the Depression, goddammit. So let's do that. All righty. I'm with you. Here we go. Fist bump. <laughs> Fist bump, baby. I love you, man. <laughs> love you too, man. Love you. You're the best. Thank you for doing this, man. You're incredible. Yeah. Great job, yeah. man. Great love job. you too, brother.